whatever we are going through, friend of mine, it's the lesser stuff. Amen. Because if you think you have it difficult, somebody has it, has it worse, if, that's, if, I, if I can use that word, worse than you. <laughs> Don't try to find that in the dictionary. <laughs> But God is merciful. Amen. That's what Jeremiah says. He permits a lesser evil in order to prevent a greater evil that would come. He brings sorrow, but it is mingled with compassion and unending mercy. Amen? Amen? The devil is not even in charge of evil. God is. And he cushions the lesser ones, so we are able to bear it. Your neighbor prayed, and her child lived. You prayed, and you suffered a great loss. God knows that you can bear it, Amen. but they could not. Yesterday I called, uh, remember a couple of weeks ago, I asked you to pray for a client of mine. His name was Chuck, and I told you he was in hospital. And I called his wife yesterday and I said, how is Chuck? She said he passed away two weeks ago. But she was strong. She said he's not suffering anymore. He's not in pain. So she looked at it from a positive side. We need to be optimistic, amen? Amen. You see, there's a difference between being an optimist and a pessimist. A pessimist is one who feels bad when he feels good, oh. but the fear that he will feel worse when he feels better. Oh. So be optimistic. <laughs> Look for a brighter tomorrow. Amen. Amen. No one can live without hope. Yes. Amen. Yes. A person who is hopeless is suicidal. Mm. And him rather says, we have this hope. Amen. 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 It's called a blessed hope. The old Negro spiritual says that trouble doesn't last always. Joy comes in the morning. Amen? Amen. It's a brighter day. It's going to be alright. It, it, it may not be alright for us in our eyes down here, but certainly trouble doesn't last always. God is going to put an end to sin and suffering. No more, no more neck brace. No more eyeglasses. Amen? Amen. We're going to have 20 20 vision. Amen. Amen. We're going to run like a <laughs> Amen. Can you imagine that? No, no more ball head. <laughs> but I, 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 I'm beginning to learn that I'm just shining more for Jesus. Amen. <laughs> the rest of my just, God just come up with here. No more false teeth or gray hair or arthritis. Or lazy writers. So, so, so what I'm trying to say that that, that husband or that, that, that wife you think is bad, that you're hooked up with, that's the lesser evil. <laughs> if you think you couldn't get anything worse than that, that's the lesser evil. Because if, if, if you told you should have made this decision instead of the one you made, that would have been a greater evil. Amen? So that spouse you think is hard to live with, God is merciful and of great compassion. So thank God what you got. Amen? Because if we can see things the way God sees it, we will have it no other way. God is so merciful towards us. So, so, so when you hear the voice of the Holy Spirit to give your heart to Christ today, amen, that's the best time to make a decision for Christ. Now the devil has no problem giving your heart to Christ. All he said to us is not today. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow is not promised. As difficult as it seems today, 
That's the best time. Amen. 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 Because yesterday is God, tomorrow is a question mark. All we have is today. That's why Christ is today, right now. If you hear my voice, hand up your hands. Amen. Amen. That's the best time because the Holy Spirit will not always strive with man. One of these days, the Holy Spirit is going to be withdrawn from the face of the earth. Amen. Amen. So whatever you're going through, friend of mine, the loss, the suffering, the misfortune, God is merciful. Amen. Amen. Now coming back to Philippians chapter 2. I read the spirit of prophecy and it says that Christ being born into the human race, even if he had come as Adam before Adam sinned, it was an ultimate humiliation. Amen. Not only that, he came, he lived among us. He slept with us, he walked and he talked, he ate, he was hungry, he was tired, he was thirsty. The couple of friends he had ran away from him. He was handed over to his enemies, went through the mockery of a trial. And then Paul paints a picture to wake us up in Philippians chapter 2. Even though he was rejected, he was beaten twice with a cat of nine tail. You see, the, the, the Romans had a knowledge of science. And then they knew how many lashes a man could take before he would die. And many men were the first blow of the wood. At the end of the leather strands, there were pieces of metal and bone and teeth. And when they would, when they would strike it, they would pull on the whip, and your flesh would be torn apart, leaving it bare and open, creating a furrow. Jesus was beaten twice. And the Bible says he was led as a lamb towards the slaughter. He opened not his mouth. He was covered with blood and sweat and spit. They were swollen there. Anything that could come up, they threw it at him. Humiliation. His hands were nailed to the cruel cross with spikes in, hand, in his hands and in his feet. It was a Roman death machine. Only runaway slaves and hand criminals. Jesus was not a runaway slave, nor was he a hand criminal. And uh, it's amazing what Christ went through. And Paul says, even the death on the cross. He reiterates what he says. He said, even the death on the cross. In reality, the those who were placed on the cross were crucified naked. The ultimate shame. The other spirits are picture that he's properly draped. That's not so. All the victims were crucified naked, despising the shame. Now, friend of mine, that's the lesser evil. All that Christ went through, the rejection, the humiliation, According to Jesus, that's the lesser evil because the greater evil is you not being with me in paradise. In his eyes, that's the greater evil. If he had not done what he did, you and I would not be here today. We would not have a heaven to look forward to. So Christ says, I'm going to go through the humiliation. Even if it meant eternal separation from the Father, I'm going to die. The Zaphagian tells us that he could not see beyond the portals of the tomb. He could not see himself coming from the grave a conqueror or telling of the Father's acceptance of the sacrifice on behalf of the human race. Amen. Even for the resurrection, he depended on the Father. Even though he said, I have power to lay down my life and power to take it up again, he waited on the Father. Becoming human 
did not lessen him as God. He was fully God. But all through his life, he acted like a servant. Even before sin, even in paradise, he had an attitude of a servant. He, came, he said, I came to seek and to save that which was lost. Yes. The ultimate humiliation. But the greater evil is that you and I not be with me. That's what he says. Amen? It does not then appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he is. Amen. So he could not live throughout eternity without you and without me. Amen? Amen. That would have been the greater evil. You see, when we look at the cross, we, if, if we look at it through the eyes of the Romans, we only see the physical suffering. But we need to look at it through the eyes of the Jews. Amen? It meant something totally different. And he didn't just die for the human race, he died for the universe. Yes. So it was settled in the minds of all creation yes. that God is who he claims to be. Amen. He's just and he's fair, he's a loving, merciful God, Amen. full of compassion. Amen. So all of the, the evil that we are going through, God is merciful. God is merciful. And He loves us. Amen. So never doubt or think for one moment that God does not care. Amen. Amen. That's why, friend of mine, when we look back where we came from, we'll say, Heaven is cheap. <coughs> Maybe we don't know how we're going to make it or if we're going to make it. That's only when we cross over and we look back. It's by the grace of God. Amen. I know where I came from and what I used to be, but thank God He is full of compassion Amen. and great in mercy. Amen. Amen. Had it not been for the grace and mercy of God, I don't know where would I be or what would I be doing right now or if I would be alive. But my God is full of compassion. Amen. So we're going to look back at 2020. And as terrible as this pandemic is or was, it looked like a kindergarten stuff. It will look like child's play. We we'll wish we'd come back to this time because the giant is on its way. Amen. Amen. We long for COVID 19 then. <laughs> because every single one of us are going to be tested and tried as though there is not another upon the face of this earth. But God is merciful and full of compassion. He has promised he will never leave us, nor forsake us. Amen. Never doubt the words of Jesus. Amen. Amen. He loves us with an everlasting love. Amen. And as I said, friend of mine, I'm going to close this message with an appeal. I'm going to make a call for the Lord. And let me remind you, whether you give your heart to Christ or not, that does absolutely nothing for Brother B or for Pastor Ricky. Amen. That's your business with Christ. Amen? Amen. Because we don't have a heaven or hell to put you in. Amen? Amen. At the end of the day, it is between you and Christ. I'm just like a beggar telling another beggar where to find the bread. I didn't write the letter. I'm just delivering the meat. So if you want a box, you box with Jesus. Amen? <laughs> but he has never lost his fight. My God is good. Amen? He seeks our interest. He took upon himself Amen. the problems that you and I could have faced. Amen. Amen. But because he lived, we can face tomorrow. We can face the storm with a smile on our face. Amen. Pep in our steps, put a spring in your heel and a rhythm in your bones, friend of mine. He puts a joy in your heart. He gives you the peace that this world cannot give. What it gives, this world cannot take away, man. One of these days it's going to be alright. We're going to sing an appeal song. And during this, hop, this song, I invite you to stand as we sing.
You are wrestling with the decision for Christ. You have not made a full surrender. And you say, Lord, this morning, I want to surrender all to Jesus. All to Him I freely give. At the singing of the last stanza, why don't you leave and just come to the altar? I'm going to pray with you to make a full surrender to Christ. It's the best decision you can make in your life. Amen. Amen. God is full of compassion. Let's sing the second, the last time.
number 525, Hiding in Thee. 524, sorry, tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. <laughs>